Welcome to part three of the metal nib experiment. In July, I started an experiment to test whether using a metal nib would damage the surface of a pen tablet. I started that experiment with a new metal nib and a fresh unused tablet surface. And I promised every day to draw on that tablet and use only that metal nib. One month later in August, I did the first checkpoint. At that time, we saw that the surface of the pen tablet was completely unaffected by the metal nib. Now, in October, it's been three months since we started the experiment, it is time for the second checkpoint. I'm happy to report that there were still no visible signs of wear or damage on the surface of the pen tablet. No scratches, no grooves, no shiny spots, and I can't feel any scratches with my fingernails or fingers or the pen. This is the very boring picture of the tablet surface, and it has to be boring because nothing has changed. I used a microscope to examine the metal nib from multiple angles. There was no sign of wear on the metal nib itself. The metal nib shape is still round and smooth, and there are no rough spots or sharp edges whatsoever. By the way, this is the microscope I mentioned. You just plug it into a USB port and it acts just like a webcam. It's got built-in lights to help you see what you're focusing on, and this gray ring rotates. That lets you control the focus very precisely. And for $40, it's quite a nice little toy. And yes, the brand of the microscope is called Pluggable, spelled with only one G. Remember, we started off trying to investigate the question of, do metal nibs damage the surface of a pen tablet? Well, some people saw my video and they pointed out to me that I was ignoring something very important. There is a possibility that using a metal nib can increase the chances of damaging your pen. They pointed me to some posts on Reddit. Let me show you what I found there. This Reddit user mentions that he's broken three pens using a metal nib. And how it happened was that the pen with the metal nib fell from his desk onto a carpeted floor and it fell from about a height of two feet, 24 inches. And he mentions that when he dropped his pens with a plastic nib, there was never a problem. But with a metal nib, there was a problem. And so he says we should be very cautious about dropping the pen when it has a metal nib. He goes on to describe the nature of the damage, which is the fall shattered some part of the inductor coil in the pen. Now he did make it clear that it took years of dropping the pen before he experienced a problem. So it is good to know that the pen didn't break at the very first drop. And then he links to another Reddit post where he shows the damage to the pens. Here, you can see the three broken coils from his pens. Now, in this post, he did not specifically write that the cause of the broken coils was the metal nib, but he did mention that in other comments that he made. I reached out to him and asked him to confirm that a metal nib was the cause of these three broken coils, and he did confirm that. One other detail that you should be aware of is that he was using the Wacom Grip Pen, not the Pro Pen 2, which I am using. Here's a close-up of two of the broken coils. You can see that the part that is broken is not the wires that are looped around, it's what's inside, the ferrite rod. And you can see on the edge of it, some part of that rod has been chipped off. And we can infer that in the fall, the metal nib moved around and made contact with the side of the ferrite rod. And ferrite is apparently a ceramic. And so we could imagine that a piece of metal hitting it might cause part of it to chip away. One interesting thing to note here, if you remember a few months ago, I did a video talking about how EMR pen technology works. In that video, I showed a slightly different looking interior of an EMR pen. What I talked about was a solid ferrite rod, and that indeed was a very, very early EMR pen design. Now, I can't speak to every tablet manufacturer because I have not cut open every pen, but I have been told for a long time now that Wacom has not used a solid ferrite rod. Instead, Wacom pens use a hollow ferrite rod. And in that case, 
the nib actually goes through the middle of the ferrite rod and then contacts a pressure sensor that is located further inside the pen. I wanted to bring up this topic about the ferrite rods because they do look different in this photo from what I've shown you before in my earlier video. So I wanted you to understand why that is. Now to emphasize the point about the potential risk, if you look at support.wacom.com and you search through their articles, you'll find this support article, which answers the question, can I use third-party nibs such as titanium or steel with my Wacom pen? This article was published or updated earlier this year, around January. To summarize the key points of the article, Wacom does not recommend that you use a metal nib. And if you do use a metal nib, they seem to consider that it breaks the warranty. Finally, the article says that if you use these metal nibs, it can cause damage, and they say that you are using them at your own risk. Now, I have to say, in the three months that I've been using my metal nib, I have dropped it many times. And I have dropped it from about 28 inches onto a hardwood floor, and nothing has gone wrong. But you know, you have to keep in mind, maybe it just fell in such a way that the metal nib did not directly contact the hardwood floor. And that is presumably where we will see the real damage occur. So I am really interested in trying to test out whether a metal nib will break the inside of the pen. But honestly, to test this means I'm going to have to try to destroy one of my pens. As you know, these pens are not cheap, so I'm not looking forward to that, but perhaps that is the price of knowledge. In any case, I will consider how to test this as I get closer to the end of the experiment. The fourth part in this series, which is our final checkpoint, will take place in January 2023. That will be the end of the six-month experiment, and then I will summarize the results. That's it for now. We'll talk again in January. Thank you for your time. Thank you.